Hello, Netroots. How amazing was that? So every time I hear her speak. My name is Lena Barakat, and I am a Palestinian American activist, donor organizer, and the president and CEO of WDN and WDN Action. It is so good to be here with all of you, my people. I don't need to tell you what the last nine months have felt like. It has not been for the faint of heart. I don't need to recount all the ways that our strength, our organizing, our most basic values of societies have been tested. Watching a live stream genocide while simultaneously being gaslit by it at every turn is a special kind of processing we will have another day. None of us are the same after what we witnessed, but nor do we want to be. Amidst, but amidst all the anger, the heartbreak, and the shatter, there has been a tremendous amount of beauty in the clarity and renewal that has come from this. This weekend here at Netroots is dedicated to all of the beautiful people, all of you who have played a role in shaping this pivotal moment in our history. Thank you. Now, for those of you who've been trying to navigate this moment and figure out how to show up and be supportive, I appreciate all that you've done to show support and offer your sympathy. But I, let me just say, on behalf of every Palestinian, we don't want your sympathy. Our spirits are strong. What we want is your courage. We want you to recognize where you have privilege, where you have power, where you have any tool, resource that you are able to organize and step into that power with the rest of us. Let this moment and let the pain of this moment transform you so that we can collectively transform our future. And as we watch more of our rights get stripped back, our democracy continue to falter and face the imminent threat of an authoritarian future that is very well resourced, I want to remind us that we have everything we need to win this fight right here. This is a moment we have been building towards for years. And what many of my fellow organizers in the room have correctly labeled a movable moment. But if we are going to be successful in changing the trajectory of our future that we are so committed to doing, we have to also learn a few lessons in some of the patterns of our past. So I offer three. First, the reminder that there is no social justice issue that has ever been popular in the context of its own time. Not one. When it comes to matters of systems change, it has to feel risky and uncomfortable for you to know that you are exactly where you are meant to be in this moment. They will tell you that it is risky. Don't get put off by that. They will tell you, my personal favorite, are you ready for it? This issue is complex. There is nothing complex about freedom, y'all. It is challenging. It will always be a challenge. Justice is a challenge, but it is our call. It is our purpose. It is not complex. So let's just get that clear from now. The second lesson, when there is a call for change, there will be pushback. And where there is progress, there will be backlash. And I can tell you right now that the backlash we are seeing, this dumpster fire of a world we are operating in, is a direct result of the progress we have been making. It is a direct result of the success of the power we have been building for our communities. That is all this is. And by the way, when I talk about backlash, I am not just talking about the right. I have a special bone to pick with some of the funders in philanthropy right now.
you know, the ones who made all of those commitments in 2020 to, social, to racial justice and who are now riding the wave of Save Our Democracy in 2024 and are simultaneously defunding the very organizations with the courage to do it? No, thank you. They are just as complicit in this, but that is a talk for another day. Which brings me to my third point. How we show up and protect each other through these times. And this is something we haven't always gotten right in the past. We know they will do everything they can to gaslight us, to isolate, and to fracture us. It is a page out of their playbook to identify the most vulnerable among us and target them so that we distance ourselves. But our mandate in this era is to run toward the most vulnerable and to flank them even through our differences. We have to learn to stay in relationship with one another because our power is in our unity and this is about all of us or absolutely none of us. So let us protect our joy in this moment. I see that as one of our highest forms of resistance. Protect our spirit, and most importantly, protect each other. And to achieve this kind of vision we have for ourselves, it goes beyond the organizing that we know is so important. It matters that, the, that our values are represented in our leadership. This work takes an unrelenting amount of courage, grace, and tenacity to fight, to, to withstand the fight that is in front of us. And no one understands this more than Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. <laughs> Alongside her squad, Corey, Greg, Elhan, Dilia, and the rest of the growing squad, they know and understand deeply what it takes to take on this moment. And we are so grateful to them for their leadership and showing up the way they are. I hope we continue to support them in this moment.